Hey guys, it's Ryan Price with another episode of the Win Crew Podcast. I'm super excited to have uh, one of the Win Crew agents, one that I actually got to learn from by listening to Adam Brooks, diehard Titan fan, diehard WKU fan, and a heck of a real estate agent. So I'm super, super happy you're here, Adam. Yes, sir. Happy to be here. Yep. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is of utmost importance in the real estate game and it's networking. Um Absolutely. We're going to go over several different ways that agents need to grow their business by networking and networking is not only um, agent to client, it's also agent to other agents and agent to other um, other entities that we work with during an escrow process. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk about building relationships in the industry. I just mentioned there are two different ways. So Adam, as far as, you know, from the time you got started to now, which is several years, what are some ways that you helped grow your business by networking with other people in the industry? With other people in the industry, I feel like, um, I feel like one of the best ways is to just re- to reach out to some of those people. And also, um, that's one of the great things I feel like we do here at the crew is we bring a lot of those people in here to meet with us um, weekly, you know, bi-weekly, monthly, at least, um, you know, maybe just uh, stopping by some of those businesses. Like maybe maybe you want to go to a, a local bank or a lender, like drop off your cards, introduce yourself, things like that. Send out uh, text messages, give them a phone call. Um, and just, you know, other people, as far as, uh, title companies, home inspectors, things like that. And then also I was lucky enough to, when I started, um, there were a few people that were also starting out in the industry as well. And they reached out to me. So I thought that was, I was like, Hey, we're kind of, we're kind of both new to this. We're going into it together. So like, what a great way to build a relationship as to kind of like learn and grow together as you're both coming up in in a new industry. Yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned like going by a title company or whatever, dropping off business cards, do you have, did you have like a, an elevator speech, like anything canned? You're like, hello, my name is Adam. Or what do you know? How'd that, how'd that initial conversation go? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, just something maybe a little generic, you know, I I didn't want to be too salesy with it, but just kind of wanted to say like, Hey, I'm a new agent. I'm from the Bowling Green area. I I love to, you know, meet new people and support local businesses. So, you know, if you're, if you're interested in working with me, you know, I'd, I'd love to work with you guys and build those relationships as well, because it's, it is vital in this industry to have those good relationships with, with a title company because you're going to, you're going to need them at some point, you're going to need a home inspector. And, and there's going to be times where um, you're probably going to, um, you know, maybe you're in, you're, you're in a pinch or something and you need those people to uh, maybe need to get in a little bit faster than you normally would. And, and, yeah. and if you've got a good relationship with that person, you know, they're probably going to be a little more willing to help you out versus someone that's a complete stranger. That's like, Hey, who is this guy here? I've, I've never worked with him before. Yeah. Why should I go the extra mile for him? Yeah. yeah. And that's one thing about the crew too, is we, you know, being as established as we are as a new agent coming in and joining the crew, you know, we have a wall of business cards, like in, our, in right. one of our hallways that, right. you know, if we need a home inspector, you know, picking the the prettiest business card or your favorite <laughs> color business card, you know, yes, that may fulfill a need, but to actually know who you're calling, have a relationship. Um, I 100% agree that it could help you move things along more quickly, or like you said, in a pinch, um, you know, help you, through some tough times. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So you now you kind of mentioned um, some different entities that we use during the, you know, the period of escrow or trying to get to a closing table or be an inspector or title company. What about your outreach to other agents? So as you're getting going, did you, you know, did you talk to some people that have been in the industry for advice or how, how did you build those relationships prior to even your first closing? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I reached out to a few other people, you know, within our company and outside of our company just to get different perspectives on like, Hey, what's, what's worked well for you? What has not been, you know, what does not work as well for you? Things like that. And then also I feel like that, that is another benefit of being here on the crew is because you've already got, you know, an array of people to choose from to kind of pick their brains as well. For sure. But I thought it was important. I mean, to pick people inside here and outside here. And even, um, I knew someone in a different state that had done it just to kind of see how their experience was was in the real estate industry. That's awesome. And it, you know, those, those conversations and those relationships don't start and stop when you drop by business or give another agent a call or deliver a business card. Talk about some ways that you can nurture those relationships after you've made your like initial contact or maybe you're, you're through your first transaction with them. Um, I think, I think one of the best ways of course is to, is to send them a text. It's an easy, quick way to do it. You know, just send them a follow up, like, Hey, like, 
glad that first deal worked out with us. I hope, I hope there's more we can do. Um, you know, maybe even if you don't, if you don't have someone's phone number right away, you can reach out to them on social media. It's always a great tool and everybody's on there. Sure. Um, and then another thing that I would do, I probably don't do as much, um, as I should, but is send out, uh, like a personal letter to them. And yeah. I think a good time to do that really is around like the holidays. I feel like that's, yeah. everybody's kind of sending out stuff then. So it's kind of, and it's like end of the year kind of touching base again. But, I th- but I think that's important as well too, just to kind of always show that you're, you're thinking about that person and you appreciate what they did for you yeah. during a transaction. It's amazing how a handwritten note can kind of give you the warm and fuzzies. I mean, I'll definitely remember something like that, that I might, you know, put on my, put on my desk or on my fridge or something like that. Always remembering that right, right. somebody took the time out of their day to actually put pen to paper and say, thank you. That, or, that's what I was going to say too. Yeah. Just it's, it shows you put a little bit more effort in than, yeah. you know, maybe another person would or. Yeah. Well, you actually mentioned it and it's an awesome, actually an awesome transition. Um, you mentioned social media and, you know, everybody's on there. Great way to do it. So yeah. What are, what are some of the ways that you built your social media presence? Because, you know, I see your face on there a lot. So was it easy for you to, you know, turn the camera around onto yourself and kind of expose, expose yourself, talk a little bit about how, that started working for you and how you continue to do it. Yeah, that's, that's a great question there. And that was, that was of course something that, yeah, I struggled with a, a great deal there in the beginning was that I wasn't on social media very much in my previous career at all. I didn't, you know, I didn't feel the need to be on there or whatever. And then when you get in this career, it's like you need to be out there as much as you can networking with other people, letting people see your face, see who you are, learn a little more about you. So yes, that, that definitely was a challenge at first. You know, I think, you know, probably some of the first videos uh, I took of myself or had someone else take here. I mean, you know, maybe I would probably spend an hour on a, <laughs> on a one minute video. Yeah. Whereas now I can probably knock that stuff out you know, just like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it, it definitely was a challenge. It's something I had to, to learn to do. And I mean, I think took a lot of practice, but I mean, now I feel like I'm very comfortable with it and actually enjoy it. And, and another thing that did help me, I will say is like, when I first started doing it, I got several compliments on saying like, Hey, Hey, you actually do a pretty good job speaking on here. And, yeah. I, and I like watching your material. So I was like, that's great. I'm going gonna, gonna to keep doing it. Yeah. So, that's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, do you have a, do you have a schedule or a goal, whether it be daily or weekly or monthly that you try to follow to make sure that on the social side of your networking, that it's, it's out there on a consistent basis? Um, we do, um, here at the crew, I know one thing we do a great job of is scheduling posts in general. I feel like that helps that way. You know, if you, if you have several things you're doing running back and forth during the day, you're like, Oh shoot, I wish I could post today. Well, you've kind of already got some of that knocked out for you, which I think is great. And then also, um, we've kind of, I've kind of followed a few different uh, calendars that we found online, like things you can different, just different things you can do to post every day to kind of switch it up. That way you're, you're not just doing a story. You're not just doing a post. You're not just talking about a house that way you can switch it up throughout the month and kind of still get your face out there, get your name out there. Yeah. Um, what about like, yeah. um, do you try to, like I personally, I'm not great at social media. I'm not going to pretend like I am, but uh-huh. one thing I do, I sit down in the mornings and I take a few minutes to, you know, follow some people I'm not following or like yeah. some posts that I'm not liking. Do you kind of, do you have something like that you do routinely? Yeah, absolutely. I, tr- I try to do that at least once a week, if not more. Um, one thing I really like to focus on here is I'm a big, you know, I'm a big food guy. I love food. I love coffee. So I try to support as many local places here in Bowling, in Bowling Green, post about them, tag them, whatever I need to do. And then it's also great when they start sharing your, you know, maybe they share your info as well, too. So For it's sure. like another just way that you can bring other businesses together to, to network. Yeah. So we've kind of talked about, you know, ways that we can network with people in the industry, other real estate professionals, how we can do it through social media. Let's talk a little bit about some in-person things. Um, me personally, especially not being good at social, I'm, I'm not great on the phone, especially when I don't have enough space to pace because I must, I must be walking while I'm talking for yeah, some yeah, reason. Yeah. But for me, getting in front of somebody, whether it be at, um, you know, a social event or like you uh, are going to hopefully speak about later is, um, you know, bringing people to you, bringing people together. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, talk about kind of some things that you do maybe in the community, things that you support that have helped your real estate business as far as networking goes. Um, again, I think that's just trying to, um, when you're introducing yourself to those other people, learn about other events that, that are important to them or like kind of see what their schedules have going on. Like I know, um, we partner with Atlantic Bay. They usually have several events throughout the year, and and I think one of one of the ones I enjoy the most, of course, is uh, they have it. They have a tailgating tent before yeah. the football game, so like it's a great way. Everyone's having fun. You're getting food, you know, drinks, whatever. Yeah. And but you're still essentially working and networking at the same time, yep. and it's a little more personable 
than just, you know, showing up at, at their business because you're, you're all there because you essentially, everyone wants to be there. You yep. know? And I think putting yourself in those situations too, you're the likelihood of you getting to know someone on more of a personal level rather than just, you know, surface level business is huge. I mean, Absolutely. if you know their, their kids' names and you Absolutely. put a birthday in your phone, uh, that doesn't do anything but help. When they, when they trust you more as a person, well, they're definitely going to trust you more as a business professional as well too, I think. For sure. Um, you know, I mentioned it before, but you've actually kind of created a group that meets, um, and you can talk more about it, but you, you meet here in the office and it's a, it's a group of like-minded individuals and it revolves around investing mostly. Talk about how that's how you started it. Maybe like where the idea come from and kind of where you got it to today, because I've seen a lot of awesome photos and actually been in the office um, when the meetings are going on. So I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's one thing that I didn't expect in the in the beginning of my real estate career as well, too. I thought I was kind of going to be selling more, you know, personal homes for people. But, you know, for whatever reason, it kind of it's kind of happened that I've worked with a lot of investors throughout the way. And um, one of the investors that I've worked with the most here um, locally, I mean, we, we did several deals together. He's been great to work with. He kind of had the idea once of he, he has traveled around the country and he was like, hey, I go to these other meetings in other bigger cities and things. He was like, why not you get us a space here and we'll we'll start having those meetings locally. Like, and we don't we don't have to travel around. We can we can do it ourselves. Sure. And then of course, you know, we got with Tony, we got the office space here with yeah. him. He okayed it. And we're like, okay, great. Like let's let's start inviting investors or let let's buy, invite lenders. Let's invite title company. Let's invite builders, contractors, mm -hmm. and then everyone can come together share their stories, share what worked for them, share what didn't work for them. Yeah. And uh, it's, just a, it's just another great way to network. And then it's also, it's like, hey, well, I know the other day we had a guy come in uh, and talk about how he started flipping some mobile homes and he had never done that before. Well, another guy gave him a contact in here and he was like, hey, this guy's great to get parts from for mobile homes. So yeah. it's like just building those connections with everyone. I think, I think it's a win-win. I'm assuming you're like, when you say flip, it's more so like updating, not actually tip it over. Yes, okay, that, that would be correct. Okay. That would be just correct. Sure we're not, for flip, the listeners we're, we're that, not flipping the properties uh, okay. over on their side yeah, or anything. Yeah, we're, foundation we're just on those updating. Yes. People. Yep. Um, so how's that? How's that event or the you know from inception to now? Has it helped you in your business personally? Or let's talk about that first. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, I think um, it's brought me more investors. You yeah. know, I mean, I actually just closed the deal I think a week or two ago with one of the guys who started coming to the meetings, and he. Yeah. Had, you know, he hadn't done that before and he, he's now closed on a property that he does want to, you know, uh, remodel and fix and sell. Right. And he's also bought a lot now as well. He plans to build a house on that and resell it. So I right. feel like it's been great. And then I've also got another guy that, you know, he's sort of coming to the meetings. We've been looking at properties he hasn't purchased yet, but, you know, he's another person that came from that meeting. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. <clears throat> I mean, obviously it's, you have the events to grow your business. It's not, you know, at the front of your mind, I would say like at the front of, anyone's mind that's going to bring a group like that together in my eyes, it's you trying to help them grow their investment portfolio. Absolutely. It's just you, you as an agent can help guide them and right. hopefully gain some business off of it as well. Absolutely. And I think one of the other benefits of having multiple people from, you know, different backgrounds, different cities, different areas, sharing their own experiences, um, when everyone's in here together too, like it's really motivating. I feel like it's, yeah. it's like if the guy hasn't bought anything yet, he's like, Oh, well, Hey, like, look, look, I've got six other people here that have already done this. So it's like, now I wanted it. And it, even myself, I'm like, well, like, yeah, now, now I need to go buy a rental property. You yeah. Know? You fired yourself up for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, as far as, you know, we talked about community events. I already mentioned that you're, you know, a, a huge, um, WKU athletic supporter, huge Titans fan. Have you, have you used, um, have you used the university or the, or the things you're interested in on campus to help grow your business at all? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I would, I, I would like to say that's something I could do even more so because, you know, those are the, the things I enjoy the most, but yeah. yes, I try to tie that in and build that relationship with as many people as well as I, as I can. And, and I think again, like what I was mentioning with having the event with the lenders, like at a tailgating event, it's like it's like a social event, but it's also like, Hey, we are here to network and talk about business as well too. And then, yeah. you know, if we trust each other, we're going to want to work together. That's right. Yeah. And especially like using, using a, you know, a commonality between somebody like a, a sports team or whatever it is. It's like, you already have, um, you already have something to talk about. So right. why not build, build that relationship and sprinkle in some real estate as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as far as, as far as for people that, you know, we kind of backtracked a little bit, 
you know, I mentioned that, you know, I get nervous around my phone and social media. Um, you were, but now you've kind of grown out of that. Right. Um, what are some ways that somebody can just start networking? We'll start with social media. What are like some of the hurdles that people have maybe mentally? What are some ways to get over that? Um, I think one of the best ways is to just practice. I mean, maybe practice in front of your, with yourself before you, you know, maybe before you post it out there for the Mm -hmm. world to see. And then another way I feel like that I got better at it too, was just, just putting in the reps, just, just doing it over and over feeling uncomfortable, but you know, just pushing through, getting it done, putting it out there. And then, you know, I feel like I've got good feedback on it so far. So, I mean, yeah, it's definitely tough if you're not used to getting behind a camera and taking pictures of yourself. But I mean, I think just, just practicing uh, like anything else and, and staying with it for sure. Staying consistent for is sure. probably one of the best things. That's, that's, that's tough sometimes as well too. You know, maybe you could knock it out three days in a row and then you forget for a few days, but, yep. but it's, as long as you get back up there and you, you check that box off. Right. And I that's where the kind of scheduling can come in. That's for scheduling sure. Coming into play. Sure. Well, you know, one of our social media gurus around the office, she, she always says post over perfect. And that actually stuck with me, not only because it was the, you know, the title of her presentation, but you know, sometimes you can get so caught up and Hey, is this exactly how I want it? Or absolutely you know, my eyebrows yeah. look okay. It's just, you know, you can spend so much time just trying to get something that out has, there. That is stuck with me as well too, because I feel like there were many times before where I would, I would have something, I'd have a post already. I'd have it typed up I'd have the picture and I'd be like, no, I'm not, I'm not I don't, I don't <laughs> like it enough. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Whereas now I'm like, Hey, you know, maybe, maybe it's not the most perfect post there is, yeah. but Hey, I feel like I did a good job with it. I worked hard on it. I'm going to put it out there and you know, it works. Yeah. Um, coming into a new year, do you, did you set any goals for yourself or things you wanted, you want to do better as far as networking goes, whether it be social or in person kind of moving forward, some things that, you know, you can do better or some, you know, like I said, some goals for maybe this year. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I know one thing I did earlier on was set up more meetings and take, time to meet with more, you know, lenders, title company, things like home inspectors, things like that. Whereas I feel like I've probably backed off of that some a little bit as I've gotten into the business, which, which I can say is, is a good thing is in a way too, because I've, I've already got some relationships there, yeah. but I feel like it's always important to, you know, to build and grow more as you're in this industry. Cause you, I mean, you, you never know when you're going to need another person there. And right. also I think just continuing uh, another goal for me too, for sure, is to continue to grow that investor meeting. I think, um, each time, uh, I mean, maybe other than our last one, because we had some weather challenges there, but each time that has gotten bigger and bigger each month that we've done it, we do it, you know, we do it once a month and I, I would like to continue to see that grow. And maybe, um, maybe eventually like the space we have right now won't, won't be big enough. Yeah. We'll have to have something else because we've got more people coming. That's so, great. Well, yeah. I, I too want to see that grow, um, not only for your own business, but just for the community, um, where you, if investors know, especially if they need to take some nuggets from other investors, having a place, a time, you know, a date that they can, they can come each month, um, I think is tremendous. And I hope that does grow for you. Yeah, for sure. And I think, I think that's one thing that we, we struggled with in the beginning too, was like, it's hard to get all these people, you know, from different backgrounds, different, you know, jobs, it's, it's hard to get them together. And we kind of went back and forth on that. Like, when do we, when do we do it? What time do we do it? Like, like, let's switch to this day. Let's switch to this day. And then we finally decided on, let's pick one day every month, first Saturday of every month. This is the time. So whoever can come, you know, that's great. And I feel like that, that really works well versus like saying like, Oh, Hey, would you prefer this time? Would you prefer this? You know, it's, you know, by just setting a schedule like, Hey, this is the time. If you want to be here, that's great. We'd love to have you. Yep. That way we're not going back and forth too much. I would say you can please part of the people, part of the time, some of the people, some of the time, but not all the people all the time. So it's, (laughs) that's perfect. You know? Yeah. So it's, especially when you're trying to, you know, gather people to, to come into, you know, four walls, um, it's good just to set a date and roll with it. Absolutely. I think um, so. kind of as we close, Adam, thanks again for being here. This has been, been awesome. Some great advice. Yes, sir. Um, let's, um, let's give the listeners three things to focus on. Uh, you know, as we begin this new year, give them, give them three things that they're going to help as far as networking goes, grow their business, maintain their business, um, and hopefully grow as a person as well. Oh, uh, okay. Three things here. Good question. Um, I think, I think number one, and I think from my personal experience, it would be social media, you know, maybe, maybe you have a tough time getting in front of that camera and coming up with what to say and everything. But again, that post over perfect, I think yep. that's, that's really important to keep in your, keep in your mind. 
And it's also just, it's the best way to get out there. I mean, everyone's on social media. I mean, I feel yeah. like everyone spends time on their phone. So I think that's got to be number one. Um, number two probably would be, um, just challenge yourself to do something that you, that you haven't done. Maybe, maybe you haven't, maybe it's something you didn't do last year. Maybe, maybe you, uh, only made so many media meetups or so many phone calls to other, um, uh, professionals in your business. Like, you know, try to up that number this year, try to see if you can get at least like maybe have, have a lunch or a coffee with, with one other professional per month, something like that. Yeah. I think that would be a great way. Um, and then let's see what else we got here. I mean, with social media, with in person, oh, and then also, um, I think those those events. Like, if if you get in, you know, have the opportunity to go to an event that, especially another company in your industry is putting on, such as a title company, I think is one that they put on a, quite a few events here. Mm-hmm. Like, take advantage of that. Take advantage of that. Go out, especially if you know if they don't cost any money. I feel like those are the sure. <laughs> those are the best ones to go to because you're getting you know you're getting networking networking for free. Yeah, absolutely. Um, nothing like networking and free food. Absolutely. You know, one thing for me is I, you know, there's so many, so many ways to be involved in community. And I think one way that somebody that need, wants to get into networking is find something that you're passionate about. Like for me, it was um, uh, like the Alzheimer's Foundation. Right. So um, because you know, our, my family, you know, has had, a, uh, had, had some pa- in the past, I've had issues with, with Alzheimer's. So it kind of, you know, hits me in the right place. So me pouring myself into something like that suddenly my networking becomes fun because i'm already interested in this i'm around other people that are interested in it absolutely and it never hurts to sprinkle in real estate as you're going along as well so yeah, find something sure. you're passionate about um that you're already pouring yourself into and then just use that as part of your networking for your own business in real estate yes so thanks That's again great. for being here adam i really enjoyed it um you can like subscribe find us on your favorite uh podcast stations at the wind crew homes uh we will see you again uh here in just a couple weeks thanks guys